How did um, Deshaun and Trey um, separate themselves from the group during camp? Well, I think they've taken the next step. You would you would want, you know, they, they had a good amount of playing time last year and they learned a lot of, you know, lessons during the season. And I just think at this, they, they capitalized on it this offseason, got bigger and faster and stronger, owned the playbook a little bit more, um, and just, just proved to be reliable, um, you know, as, as every down back. What, what, I guess what didn't you see from, from Damian that would put him into that, into that group of two? Is it just being a freshman? That... Uh, honestly, how we look at it in our room is we're, we're going to depend on the guys that are reliable in general. You know, if, You'll, you'll see as the season goes, there'll be a lot of guys that get in the game, and we'll, we'll put them in uh, when we feel like they're reliable in different situations. Damien had a great camp. He's well ahead of the curve. He's doing a great job. Um, you know, he's just a year behind those guys uh, as far as playing, you know, playing experience and things like that. But I was very pleased with his camp, and he's, he's right on par to have a great season himself. With, with so many talented running backs in that room, how do you kind of decide on, like, is it the flow of the game? Do you have a plan going into the game? Like who's going to play? How do you how do you figure that out? For sure, we always have a plan. Absolutely, uh, they know we're. It's a it's kind of a sliding scale. We're going to play the most talented, reliable player, um, and it, it that could be situationally, or that could be you know as a, as an every down mindset. And uh, I think, like I said, they'll all at, at some point show uh, their value, you know, in some some way, shape, or form uh, within our offense. Um, but we got to kind of let the season go and, and see. I think. I think we'll see guys emerge in different areas of the game too in, in a situation. I mean, last year we had the Pac-12 leading rusher and we also had two guys that combined for a thousand yards rushing, you know, and so it's not like we don't, we're not gonna play multiple running backs, you know, and everybody's, if, if they've earned a role, you know, they'll be able to own their role. And um, that's kind of, you know, this, we had success with that formula last year. and. You know, hopefully we can we can stick to that. Like, so let's say you say Boise. Let's say you're doing okay, but maybe you feel like you need a spark, and you hadn't really planned to put Jam or, or Damien in. Could you see yourself just saying, okay, yeah, you're in. You're well, in. Well, yeah, one. I mean that's the culture that yeah. we have in our room, and they got the guys know everybody. Keep your helmet snap, be ready. You know, because they're all good enough to play. You know, and, and that's a good a good issue to have. But at at the same time, if a guy's really rolling, then you yeah, know yeah. we're not gonna if it's not pull rolling, him out. Yeah, we're yeah. not. We'll try. We'll try not to fix it. But uh, it, it's going to be a week to week deal. Yeah. You know, in our room, they got to earn the right to, to play on Saturday, and that's that's a unique situation. So we, we've had camp, but it's kind of like twelve weeks of camp during the season, as well as just earning the the continued right to have opportunities on the field. And so, with that, I think you'll see guys games evolve, and and you can see a lot of different guys uh, rotating through there at some point this season. Given last year's success. Do any of the running backs feel certain type of pressure or an expectation to live up to? And is that positive or negative if they do? I don't think there's an unrealistic expectation. We have a standard of how we, we perform. You know, it's kind of what we what we say in our meeting room. I'll, I'll let it let it let it be said. But I think there's a standard that that the guys just live by, and the standard that we have is always going to be higher from any than any standard anybody else is going to have for us. That's something that they own personally as well as collectively as as a group. Um, and then something we just be, we talk about, you know, uh, through the off season, during the season is just we take pride in everything we do, and uh, we're gonna make it practice way harder than it's gonna be in the game. And so we don't really get caught up in expectations and, and all that because we're, our mindset is that we're we're our biggest critics, you know. And so I think when you train that way, the the noise doesn't really uh, bother you as much. What uh, specific improvements did you ask Sean to make during the off season? For sure, I think he definitely needed to uh, add value in a pass game a little bit more. Uh, he was he was kind of a one-trick pony to an extent last year, uh, just very reliable in a run game, but not didn't really have other phases of his game that uh, that he had taken big you know those strides in. And I think he's done that this offseason. He's he's proven to be able to block and to be able to catch the ball out of the backfield and uh, just be a more reliable every down type player. And so uh, credit to him and the work he did this offseason. A lot of days he's up here. Um, on his own, you know, just working those things. He's not doing the, the glamorous footwork drills that been posted on his Instagram and all that that some of you see some guys do. He's up here doing the, the ugly stuff that people are thinking he's kind of silly out here doing by himself. Uh, but you see it in his game. You know, it, it, it's definitely paid off, and he's going to continue to improve because he's made that investment. And then the same with Trey. What, what specific things did you ask him to do I think on the other side, just being more reliable in the run game, you know, being able to be counted on to run multiple schemes, you know, within our in our run system. 
Uh, and he's, he's been really good in the past game in the past. He's done it last year. He came in and had some big opportunities to uh, help us in the, on the third down specifically, and I think he did that. Uh, but he's he's just cleaned his game up. You know, we look at as soon as the season's over, we make a cut up and we look at watch every clip, and then we say, hey, these are the areas that we need to improve on. We watch, then we go through spring ball. We re do the same thing. Like, hey, these are the areas that you've taken strides in. These are areas that we still need to work on. And then that's what camp's about. And so now, you know, like I said, even during the season, we're in a constant process of like looking for things to clean up, looking for things that we're doing really well that we need to continue to capitalize on. And so it's just a, it's an uncomfortable process that never ends until the, the season's over and we have that two week break before we get back going on the next year. So I think they're fully invested when it comes to that. And I, I think you'll see a cleaner product from both of those guys uh, this, this season. How much better is the defense this year um, than maybe last year? <sighs> they're really good. They made us earn it. Uh, our kind of our arch nemesis is the running backs are obviously the linebackers and coach Bray coaches the linebackers. They're they're so well coached. Obviously they have really a lot of talented guys, a couple of captains over there. Uh, so they make us earn it. They've made us they've been a huge part of our group and we kinda we have like a little sibling type rivalry with those guys. We talk a lot of trash with them and then when it drills over we go hug them and, and give them fist bumps and all that. So it's it's been really good, you know, to see them and then all three three levels of our defense up front, the backers and uh, the DBs, you know, I'm I'm really excited get over there and coach my guys up so I go root them on, you know, on second, third down uh, this, this season. So we're excited about the, about the defense as well. And then you said Damian's ahead of the curve, you know, for, for a freshman. Were there flashes or moments in camp where you saw kind of what the future could look like for him and, and what were, if so, what were some of those moments? For sure. I mean, the, the sky's the limit for him as far as his ability. He has a high ceiling. Uh, my favorite part about him is that he is a, you could, sometimes he'll show that he's a freshman, just something that he literally doesn't know, a situational thing. He writes it down. There's You won't find anybody that takes more notes than he does in, in meeting room. And he immediately corrects that that ha that uh, action. So the next day you put him in the same situation and he learns from it. And that's, that's why I speak so confidently. His talent, you'll see his ability. Physically, he doesn't look like he's 18 years old, uh, but it's just the, the commitment that he has to becoming a great player is that, that it just makes you really confident that he will become that. Um, he has the, the the intangibles that you can't coach. You know, he's over there doing some extra stuff on the side, and you didn't tell him as a coach. And he's he's a freshman. You know, that's usually things you have to teach players to do. Um, you know, kudos to to his high school coaches, literally whoever whoever instilled those habits within him. Um, and, but he's you'll see it. I mean, he'll make some plays this year, and and he'll show flashes. But physically, mentally, he's he's well beyond his years. You know, from that standpoint, and so it'll just be a process to continue to uh, to grow, just like any other player, and, and we'll see what the future holds for him. But I'm excited about it.